man from the north, we're going to bring it home. Keep the cameras there, we'll pick up to come back. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Sunday game on All-Ireland Hurling Sunday. It was a Sunday which saw a historic event at Croke Park this afternoon, Antrim's first appearance in the Senior Hurling Decider since 1943. Well, all the colour and excitement of this big day for the men from the north coming up in the programme tonight. The story of the 1989 All-Ireland Hurling Final, interviews, analysis, our live phone-in, that's on 838888, and those lines are open now. Plus, of course, our Man of the Match selection from this year's final. Now, we'll be making that presentation live on the Sunday game tonight. Indeed, we have outside broadcast units in both camps. Now, we'll be going over to Malahide a little bit later on to join the Antrim team where they have been camped for the weekend. And where on Taoiseach, Charles Sahi met some of the Antrim players earlier on. Well, will that presentation be made there later on tonight? Or will it, in fact, be made at Leopardstown, where the Tipperary men are having their after-match function right across on the other side of the city at the racecourse function rooms? And both events, as you can see, are in full swing at this stage. Well, also on the programme tonight, the views of our panel, and they are Conor Hayes, the Galway captain, and Donald O'Grady, former All-Ireland medal winner with Cork. Well, right now, let's pick up on the headlines of the day in sport with Anne Casson. It's been a well-organized morning for the men of Tipperary. After breakfast, they went by coach to St. Michael's. There they had mass at St. Michael's School. Afterwards, limber up in the gym there and then out on the field. It is being said that this is the fittest Tipperary team ever to contest in all Ireland. And if it is, and I have no cause to doubt it, then the man responsible is international athlete Philip Conway. You have to learn the, the skills of stretching well into the winter months and keep it up and have to maintain it right along all the time. So in that phase, you have no doubt about them at all today? I'm very pleased with the way they have prepared themselves. That's the physical health. What about the mental health? And how about the man beside you? What's he been doing with them? The mental health is very good and the, the skill factor and the team coordination has been well prepared by Babs here who is well used to that. Sure is. Just taking you away from this last limber up before Croke Park. Are your nerves as good as the lads say theirs are? No, my nerves are, are good, Jimmy. I, I never felt as relaxed either as a player on, on my three years as a selector. Uh, credit is that uh, everybody uh, they, they've been telling us we're going to win, but I don't accept that. We have a job to do, and I think uh, we set out the Monday after last year's All Ireland to be here today. All our plans were geared up today. And we have no complaints. If, if Antrim win, we'll shake hands with him. But we're prepared as well as if a great team can be prepared. Thanks to Phil, thanks to all the lads, and more particularly thanks to the lads themselves. The efforts they've made, uh, the generosity they've showed towards the Bay Hurling has been immense. And uh, we couldn't ask for any more, and everything we asked for, we got. <laughs> Antrim Hurling has waited several generations for this moment, the dawn of All-Ireland final day and the team from the Saffron County involved. That tingle of expectation is in the air. The players may be feeling just a little bit tense at this moment as they realise the enormity of the challenge that awaits them. But those around the team firmly believe that Antrim can do it. Bishop Tony Parker, Diamond Connor. Uh, interesting that our paths should cross at an all-round final involving Antrim, given sporting associations in the past. That's right. Well, we've had a, a few meetings in the past in our Belfast days together. Um, this is obviously a slightly different one for the two of us, but very much one for tremendous enthusiasm for, our, for myself. And I think all Northerners, like yourself, are taking an extra sort of special thrill in, in the occasion today. On the way down, I read the Irish press. Unbelievable. Don't give us a chance at all. Say we shouldn't even be there. The way we come out of Ulster, the say we shouldn't be there. Say it's been an open draw. Adam, we're here to prove a point. We're going to win the All Ireland Hurling final. Well, so much. Yeah, it is a fabulous day. There's no point in I mean, what do you say after captain and uh, team to an All Ireland final? I mean, but he, he say you're great. Like, I mean, it's 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 unreal. And 
it's something that I just have to go home and th think about for a few days. It, it, it'll take a while to sink in, but it's a fabulous feeling. And so many good performances, the Bonner brothers, John Kennedy. Yes, I, I mean, I'd have to sit back and look at the game again. All through, I think it was a team, a, a great team effort. Uh, right through, I knew even last night we had a players meeting and the lads were so keyed up for them that, you know, they were taking no, nothing for granted. And everybody wants, just wanted to play well and do well for each other. Well, last year we were in the same position with Jimmy. Uh, you brought me in, we were after losing, it was hard to talk, you know, it's a bit easier this time. I think that after Declan Ryan getting the goal there in the first half, I think he was one for a pint, and it's lobbed just in underneath the crossbar, and I think that's what killed him off a lot. I think, putting it down to a lot of that, that goal was turning point of the game. And they found midfield, the whole midfield diamond was difficult for them. Wasn't yeah, Declan Kerr and Colin Bonner had a great game in the middle of the field. They dominated there, really, and they sent in great ball into the towers. It was great, it was very easy for us to, to pick off scores. It was a funny game watching it from, from my vantage point. I thought we started very shakily, and uh, we seemed uh, very um, nervous in our strike, in our forwards especially. But uh, Antrim came down, got a few chances, and uh, luckily for us, uh, Things went well and they didn't score. So um, when Declan Ryan got his goal, I think was, we opened up and set the hurling like we should. Two goals and 12 points and could and made a few more. Great day for you. I don't know about the two goals, Jimmy. I think I only got one. Huh? Did you not get the final touch to Collins on? No, no I don't think so, no. No, I think Cormac Bonner got that one. I, I think it might have hit me in the way, but I, it was nothing that I had to do with it, to be honest. But no doubt about the last one. That was yeah. a little icing on the cake, wasn't it? I think, you know, at that stage, I, I was just lucky, Jimmy. I think, you know, it's... It hopped up nicely in front of me, and I don't think I could miss. Midfield for them was a killer area, really. Yes, it sure was. Declan Carr was tremendous, and Colin Bonner had a pint to prove. He was dropping the semi final, he was very disappointed. But he came back and he gave an all star performance today. Um, we started well, we had a breeze behind us, and we got confidence, plenty of confidence, so it worked out well for us. And what about Nicholas? Nicholas, great. What can, I mean, what can we say about all the forwards, really? They were getting the right type of ball and they were using it to the, its best effect. Yeah, well, it's great that he started dating with a minor medal and finished dating with a senior medal. So it's great for Mickey, Joe and myself. We were on that 80 minor team. What are you telling me now? You're going to begin the 90s with a hat-trick? Yeah, we have to now. We have to keep it going. We have to defend our crown with honour next year. And please God, next year, things will go well and we'll get another order. Madam Sergeant, please, the Antrim officials. Thank you. Yeah. Lads, I don't have a whole lot to say. Needless to say, on behalf of our team, we congratulate you from the bottom of our hearts on a magnificent performance and a great display of hurling. Suffice to say that we're very disappointed ourselves at being beaten. However, your win possibly was needed as much as ours, if not more, and we would hope that when we meet you in the National League, we'll have an equally sporting game in Belfast, and we'll welcome you up at that time as All-Ireland champions. Again, the best of luck to you and may you bask in your success for until next year, and perhaps we might be able to turn the tables for the Cad Meal of Myoga Flats. Twelve months ago, I was accused of uh, being less than generous to some of our players. And uh, I suppose at this stage, one of the players that I was less than kind to was Pat Fox. And I suppose if anybody is high up there on top of the rocket cash list, Pat Fox, and I know the other lads won't won't mind me mentioning him, because his loyalty and his commitment to us uh, showed what the rest of the lads are. And uh, I just want to say thanks, Pat, thanks everyone, down to the 24, including Paul Delaney, for what we've done for Tipperary Hurling. We haven't gone that, get, that decade like a lot of people might thought we would without winning the All-Ireland. To my two se selectors, Tion Dorney, 25 years ago to the day since we first got the McCarthy Cup in here. And uh, we've been great friends since. And uh, to Phil Bennis or Richie Bennis or to the men in Cork, they have to worry about us for another year, I can assure you. And they all say about filling the cup, but how nice it is to fill it with Tipperary spring water. <laughs> and there might be something else in it tonight. Well, now we come to one of the high points of the night on the Sunday game, the naming of the man of the match for the 1989 All-Ireland Hurling Final. Well, now that decision was made by our panel of Conor Hayes and Don O'Grady, but the announcement will now be made by Jimmy McGee out at Leopardstown. Yes, here we are and what a nice uh, evening we've had here with the Tipperary Association. Lovely meal, certainly I feel fine after it anyway. And here just on my left and behind me we have two welcome visitors tonight, Bobby Ryan and Liam McCarthy, or should it be Liam McCarthy and Bobby Ryan? Anyway, Bobby's had a special stick, I want to tell you. He's had it for five years now. Would you believe in the last five minutes of the game today, 
he broke it. But uh, he won't mind that too much, I'd say. And knowing him, it's probably be repaired tomorrow. Or oh, maybe Tuesday. <laughs> this has been the day of the 18s. The end of an 18-year wait. They won by 18 points. Antrim scored 18 points. Tipperary used 18 men to win it. And Nicholas English, despite what he said in that post-match interview, did score 18 points. Two goals and 12, a record. Now, he's very much in the running for the man of the match. So, too, are the Bonner brothers. What about Declan Carr, who was superb at midfield? John Kennedy, brilliant at wing back. I have no vote in it, as Michael said. That's Donald and Connor. I have my own ideas as to who should get it, but I'll keep quiet for the moment. The man to take us out of our misery, the man of the match, All Ireland Senior Hurling Final of 1989. Here to present it, tell us who it is, our match commentator, Jerry Canning. Okay. Thank you, Jimmy. Yes, it was a superb performance by Tipperary, and the jury was out for a little while on this one because of what Jimmy said, so many good performances, taking you out of your misery straight away. One of my heroes for a long time, man of the match this year, is Nicky English. Don't let it fall. Don't let it fall. Everybody sit down. Thanks, Tyke. Nicholas, when all your teammates, all your peers, and all the guests here stood to acclaim you and applaud you, now you know what to think of you. I don't know, Jimmy. I, at the end of the day, I'd like to make 24 pieces of this. And uh, the way my hands are shaking at the moment, isn't you it? Could I, do it I could very it. well do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know after the match, but we've seen the video since. You did get the last touch on that. I think if I, if I did, it's courtesy of Cormac Bonner. So I, I don't really know. You'd have to watch it again. I know that you desperately wanted to play well on the big stage and the big occasion. Surely now even you must be satisfied. I think it's, it's great. Since 1971, I was at the match, and I was a kid of seven or eight years of age. And I always wanted to play with Tipperary. And to pull on the Tipperary jersey for me is, is enough. And Eventually, when we, we won the All Ireland today, it's, it's more than anything I could have ever hoped for. And I'd like to thank the rest of the lads that, that helped me, and Babs, Theo, and Donny. And I think Bobby and myself, and even though Bobby looks, looks it, but I mean, I don't really look at it if I've been around so you long. You mean he's younger looking than you? <laughs> Come on, don't be pandering to the captain. <laughs> no, I think, I, I think we've been. Bobby has been around a long time, and I've been around <laughs> a little bit less, but I think. You know, at the end of the day, it, it was great just to be part of a Tipperary team that won the All Ireland final, and it, it, it's just a remem the memory that I'll have for forever and ever again. You got a dump in the mouth, huh? Yeah, I think it was just a little bit. I think I might have been playing for it, Jimmy, a bit, you know. <laughs> I, doubt, I doubt that. One thing, just before I let you go and sit down and finish your meal, the last goal near the end that will live with you forever, surely. Yeah, I think it was. It just hopped up nicely, Tommy, and it could hop up to hundreds of people and they wouldn't put it in. No, I think at, at, at the end of the day, it was, it was lovely to score it. And probably uh, only for it, I wouldn't have this bit of glass over Declan Carr and then all the rest of the lads that played so well today. So it, it was lovely to score it. And the, those boys that nearly broke my back after scoring it, I, I hope they, they're feeling well now. And it's, <coughs> as Bobby said today, it's, it's great to be Tipperary men tonight. You will notice that he has not dropped the special Man of the Match <laughs> award. Why should he? Very nearly. No, <laughs> I just want to say one other thing before I hand you back from Leopard Sound and it's this, and it's very simple. If he, this man, who is the man of the match, were going for personal glory today, just thinking of himself and not Tipperary, what score really would he have had? All that he gave away, all the passes, all the running of the ball. In my opinion, Nicholas English, you are the man of the match. <laughs> Yes, and I think most people would agree that Nicholas English was in a class of his own at Croke Park this afternoon. Well, Antrim, on the other hand, have been reflecting on their part in the 1989 All-Ireland Hurling Final. So let's find out what the feelings about that match are in their camp now as we go over to the losing camp at the Grand Hotel in Malahide and George Hamilton, who is talking to Niall Patterson. I think we'll probably take a rest for a couple of months 
and we'll get down, get our heads together and try and learn from the experience. There's no doubt about it, it's a great experience being there and the All-Iron final, like, but it would definitely didn't end up the way we'd planned. What do you remember most about today? First goal. Oh. I thought you didn't want to talk yeah, about that. I was, I was balled up, then I lost up the sun, and uh, I didn't want to expert my hand in case I missed it. And I put my stick up, and I just come off the top of my stick into the roof of my net. Mm. There's one happened before that, a comic baller me, myself collided. I came out as well below a dropping ball, I lost up the sun again, but I was fortunate enough with that one. Mm. It just didn't happen for me the second time. And I possibly could have been the turning point in the game. The actual parade around behind the band, from you step out from behind the band until you finish, you don't remember anything of it at all. Uh, the whole day, the whole day on the field actually passes by very, very quickly. So Do you remember much about your scoring contributions? Well, at the first point I took, I, I probably should have gone on and taken the goal, but at the time, Tipperary had just scored a goal and I felt it, uh, knew that I scored it definitely set me, and I thought if I'd missed, it would have been you know, worse on it than if I'd scored the point, so one of those things. Then the goal came? The goal came in the second half, it was a good pass out, I think it was made me carry out to myself, and uh, just it was on the opening. Took the shot, so. so you can, you can <laughs> lie in bed at night and think about that. Ah, uh, so it'd be nice to get a few more of them. You know, it would be nice if we had a lot more scores than what we did. I enjoyed the day yesterday and uh, took my mind off the game. And, uh, I didn't play particularly well myself today, but I don't think it was that was a factor. I think Tipperary skill and Tipperary's determination was more a factor in that than my own uh, abilities or talents or whatever it is. They played very well, and all credit to them, they did very well. Many another team would have lost their discipline going so far behind, but Antrim, I felt, kept their heads, kept their cool, and kept their heads up. Yeah, I think at half time I was shouting at them to be proud of themselves and keep their pride, because, as you say, it was their first time on a big occasion, in an All-Ireland final. Um, I saw a little bit of the, the preview of the match, and Liam O'Donoghue said this was a different ball game from a semi-final. Antrim have done well in semi-finals, but this was a different ball game, and that's what it proved to be. Tipperary were sharp, they were hungry, they knew what they had to do. They were led a little bit wiser because they were beaten last year and they knew they didn't want to lose. Now, what we came into was a situation where we didn't know what to expect, we didn't know what to do practically, and we started off, and we started off reasonably well. Then Tipperary just wore us down, wore us down with their determination. Some super players, like I, I really enjoyed the match on reflection from watching some of their players play. Nick the English, I think, proved himself to be the best player in the country today. Uh, Declan Ryan was super. Yes, indeed, a nice compliment there from Kieran Barr, and I'm sure Antrim will have learned, as he said, a lot from today's match. Our phone lines are still very busy, and they're still open if you can get through. 838888 is the number to ring if you have a point to make about today's match. Well, at this point, let me introduce my guests here in the studio again. Connor Hayes and Donald O'Grady are both very welcome. Donald, as Kieran Barr said there, they didn't know what to expect in today's final, neither did we, but I suppose at the end of the day it was all a little bit predictable, really. Well, that's true, Michael, but before I get into that, I want to offer Tip Hartley's congratulations, really. They, they, had, they put up a superb performance, and it was nice also to see their backroom team um, rewarding past loyalties by introducing Donny O'Connell, Joe Hayes and, mm -hmm. and um, Aidan Reiner. I thought that was a nice touch. But coming back to your question, uh, really, it was predictable. Um, Tip were going in as hot favourites, um, Antrim underdogs, uh, extreme underdogs, really, and uh, most people were, were Tip were going to win by a score of man, and that's as it happened. Connor, you've had some hard battles with Tipperary over the last three years, but I'm sure that your thoughts would have been with them today as well. Yeah, I think that their turn uh, had been coming for the past couple of years, and uh, they got their chance today, and they took it in, in fine fashion. Um, I suppose going into the game, we weren't really sure what to expect from Antrim, but I think that Tipperary were hot favourites, and they proved themselves to be a very good team today. And uh, I think that, uh, I suppose, Antrim had probably surprised awfully, so the surprise element had gone out of it. Yeah. And uh, Tipperary had prepared, obviously they were very fit, and uh, psychologically they were much much better prepared than Antrim were today. It was Antrim's first All-Ireland, and uh, I can appreciate the way that the way that they were going into it, and didn't really know what to expect, and uh, Tipperary had the experience and had the players in the end. Well, so, no doubt about the result then, but Donald O'Grady, I just wonder, some of those Antrim misses early on in the match, maybe if they had put them away, do you think it would have been any different in the end? Well, Michael, any team going in an Antrim's position, they must, they must fight very hard for every ball. Every ball must be a make or break. And really, they, they were very slack when it came to that, particularly in the first three or four minutes. Yeah. They didn't pick up the men. They, they should have been tight handed from the start. Declan Carr's sideline ball here was easily picked up by Michael Theory and he stuck it over the bar. Not an Antrim man, gave him two or three yards. That's fatal when it comes to tip. It was lying on the men, sure. pressurised them all over the field. They didn't do that. And 
Secondly, when you get any chance when you're in that position, you must put the, the fairly reasonable chances away. You now, great skill there by Kieran Barr, caught a beautiful ball and made a great run. But coming up to the goal, took his chance and sent it wide. Yeah. And that's fatal for Antrim, and that tip went into a four points in the lead. That's the kind of thing I suppose is really a kind of a psychological blow, Connor. when you make a great run like that and then I suppose really make a mess of it in the end. And I suppose all through the first half, things were going wrong, the little things, the big things were going wrong for Antrim. Yeah, I think that Tipperary were playing with a, a bit more, good bit more assurance. Uh, they had a bit of a, a nervous start, but then uh, as the game went on, Tipperary uh, settled down and uh, played very assured kind of hurling. Uh, I think that, you know, even a clearance here out of the Antrim defence uh, comes to Connell Bonner, uh, the right half back. He gets his clearance back down, even though it's picked up again by Desi Donnelly. You know, the, uh, Antrim were yes. coming back into the game uh, at this stage. Back out again, back to Connell Bonner again. Now he, you know, evades uh, Sambo here and flicks it across, comes to, to John Lee. Uh, yeah. He has a bit of room again, perhaps he takes his point very easily. Um, good bit of dominance there by the tip half back line. Again, this is the goal that coming up here. Uh, Declan Carr coming across. Lucky goal, really, and uh, really was a, a blow. I'd say that yeah, Declan Ryan was going for it. He was the probably going for really point, dropped yeah. into the net. And it really, it really set uh, Antrim. It really set Antrim back. It was the type of score that they really couldn't afford to concede. If they, if they had got it, it would have been a great boost sure. to them. But it, it really, I think, it, it really set them back. It was about halfway through the first half, I think, and it, it really, you know, they dropped their heads after that. Well, I suppose, Donald, really, this is part of the learning process for Antrim because Tipperary have been there before. They had the experience in those kind of situations. Today, they were doing everything right, and that just wasn't by chance. That's right. There, there's an awful lot of pressure really on the team coming into their first All Ireland. And Kieran Barr said it there in a nutshell. He 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 actually found himself standing back, admiring Tip mm. at various stages. Yeah. That should never happen. If you're going about your work properly, that wouldn't happen. And really, in the first half, Tip was great, cl great class. They took some great scores, moved the ball and used the ball very well. Chris crossing around the forward line, back and forth, and running off the ball was was great to see from from the upper decks of the stand. Sure. And a great catch there by Declan Carr again runs up the sideline and over the bar. Very little pressure on him again, I must say, from, from the Antrim backs. And this was a feature of Tip. They strung seven, eight, nine points together under no pressure, whereas their backs got into timely tackles that will come. And this is a great move coming up here, particularly. See John Lahey, you know, crossing the ball back across. Th that's, no backline can live with that kind yeah. of play. And a great run again from Pat Fox. Kid excellently all through again today, as he has done in the Championship so far. And Nick English just taps it away. That, Antrim could never match that type of play all through. And that, that's what divided both teams in the end. The class from Antrim is sort of puffing and puffing at times, but they just won't do it. In fairness to Antrim, they never really let it get to them. They just played on as well. One of our panellists said this afternoon as though nothing was happening. They came into it a bit more in the second half, but I think Tipperary always had plenty in reserve there. Tip had things in hand, all right, but at the start of the second half, Antrim g g got into the game. They had a great chance to get back at it. They, they had a penalty saved, which I think could have turned the game against them, really. Mm -hmm. And for 10 minutes of the second half, they fought like Tigers. But Tip came along then and stuck the ball in the back of the net to lead by 2.14 to, to 5 points. Goal there by Carl McBonner, despite what Jimmy McGee says, I think. <laughs> and that's kind of set them off. But although Aidan McCarry, in fairness to him, got back, worked hard for a score and got a great goal here. Nothing Ken Hogan could do about it. And it, it lifted Antrim for a while. But they would have really needed to strung one or two more goals together at this point. But it was all over. And again, a superb move here. But it just shows how easy things were. There'll be five Antrim backs here at one stage and none of them could stop Pat Fox. Yeah. So it just shows really. I it was a great shot. It was, it was really, a very well taken goal. He dropped goal, the ball. It was very hard to block those ones. But I mean, it showed Antrim five backs to one forward and he still sticks in the back of the net. But first class is played by Tiff. Well, OK, now, Nicholas English has been saying one thing and Jimmy McGee has been saying another and everybody is saying something different about that goal of Nicholas English's, the first one that he scored, or did he score this afternoon? Well, we're going to have a look at it again and see if we can sort it out with Conor Hayes because I think that Cormac Bonner actually got this one, Conor. Yeah, um, Nicholas English rounds his man here, takes it up uh, right into is the edge of the square. Uh, definitely he set up the goal. I mean, he did all yeah, the hard work, I suppose, and up, created but, um, the opportunity. Now watch this, Cormac gives it a flick. He gets a touch here, it comes off the post. Uh, come back, so it comes back out, Nicholas English is there, Cormac Bonner is there. Uh, it was a combined effort, but uh, when I saw it on the, on the, on the day, I, I said Nicky English definitely got it, but looking at it in replay, I think Cormac Bonner should be credited with yes, it. Yes, yeah, well maybe they can share half it each or something, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> now, one man who is convinced actually that it was a goal uh, for uh, Cormac Bonner was Michael Fahey from Cork, he rang in to say that having seen it a number of times, he has absolutely no idea or uh, no doubt at all about who scored the goal. Cormac Bonner, he's putting it down to. 
Now it's time to have a look at some of uh, your phone calls that have been coming in. And a great response, and thank you very much for phoning in uh, all through the last few hours indeed. A lot of people, of course, have really enjoyed the game today. Now, Frank Kiernan from Middlesex thought it was absolutely brilliant. Terry O'Donnell rang from Perth in Scotland to congratulate Tipperary and to compliment Antrim on doing Ulster proud. And uh, Mr O'Connor in Galway, I'm not too sure if it's Bernie, uh, congratulated both teams but suggests a sinister thought that it was a stage-managed event to ensure a Tipperary win. Well, perish the thought indeed, Mr O'Connor. It was the best game of Harding this year, so said Kenneth Linsky of Mayo, but David Finn from Cork disagrees. It was the poorest All-Ireland since 1940, he says. There was no class and he has seen them all. Well, good or bad, everybody seems to agree that the match was a very clean one today. Mrs Anne Long and Tallis says that uh, she'll be a tip fan after today. That's so much that she enjoyed it. And Sean Thompson, also from Talla, compliments both teams and their sportsmanships. And he adds that he thought that the referee did very well. Now, on that point, uh, Andy Dugru from Port Leisha says the referees have come in for a lot of criticism recently. Would Donald O'Grady like to give his opinion on today's ref? I thought he was very good. He, he stepped in. No, there wasn't that much really that, that went on, but anything that did happen, any dubious tackles, Patellini was in straight away and he exerted his authority. But, but it comes down to this. If the ref gets great help from the players, well, I mean, he can do a good job and he did an excellent job today. Well, he certainly did. I would have to agree with that in full. Now, we're going to go back live to Leopardstown. We were there a moment ago to see the uh, Man of the Match presentation to Nicholas English, but the celebrations, of course, continue. And Jimmy McGee is standing by to talk to us once again. Yes, I have a new question for Know Your Sport in years to come. Who scored a half a goal in an All-Ireland hurling final? <laughs> or actually, according to the other two Bonners, Cormac definitely got that goal and not Nicholas English. Well, this particular party is over, but of course it goes on later tonight when you meet the supporters outside here in the grandstand. It'll go on tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday, and October, and November, and December, and January, and why not, if you wait 18 years in title to cram it all in? But of course there's a little matter of an under-21 match in a week hence, and they'll be worried about that. At least a couple of them will anyway. They've been very kind to me, these Tipperary people, over the last few days. Most courteous, very hospitable, and I really feel part of them here tonight at Leopardstown. In fact, I'll let you in on a secret. I have been invited to join the Sleeve Naman show band. So here goes. The valley, I said that'll get a few old rattles before the night is out tonight. And I would like to uh, also add my words to what Jimmy McGee said. The hospitality and courtesy of the Tipperary people building up to this All-Ireland final has been absolutely superb. Now it's time to take a check on the rest of the...